<laughs> good afternoon, good afternoon, welcome, welcome. <laughs> my name is Alex Cooper. If you haven't been in one of my classes before, let me introduce myself. I'm the computer teacher for the Columbia County Library in Evans, Georgia. The Harlem Library and also the Uchi Creek, uh, now with our new building, uh, Grovetown Library. So we're at home right now, keeping ourselves safe with teaching and everything. So we're doing all our classes online virtual, virtually and stuff. So of course we're doing uh, programs virtually as well. So very glad that you're here with me today and happy Veterans Day. <laughs> happy Veterans Day. So the project we're doing today with our Raspberry Pi. So this is kind of part of a series. We have a, um, a beginner class, I guess you could say, with the Raspberry Pi and physical computing. And we're basically, you would come into class, I'd have a Raspberry Pi for everybody, have about, um, you know, 12 to 15 students or so, depending on, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, uh, depending on how many people so we can come in. And of course, everybody would get one and we would work on some of the projects. And I'll give you my handout for that, so that you'll have it. Let me get to that real quick. But... Okay, welcome to class. Anyway, I'll have that for you just a second. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do our introductions and stuff. So our big thing is, uh, do you have any questions? Feel free to post any questions that you have in the chat and stuff. One of the big benefits to come into one of our free classes, our live classes, is that, of course, you can ask questions. And, I, you know, of course, I'll ask the big questions. How can I help? What questions do you have already before we even get started? Now, like I said, this is part of the, our series. It's not really a series, just kind of loose leaf, different projects I'm working on. And they're all kind of based on working with our Raspberry Pi and a, um, a kit of components that I got for a whole bunch of different projects I've never worked on before. So that's kind of the thing we're doing, and I'll give all the information for that as well. So if you want to uh, purchase that you can I uh, got it off of Amazon and of course everything else that we're going to talk about today with our breadboards and our wiring and everything actually came with that little kit I think it was 35 or 40 dollars or so and then of course already have the the Raspberry Pi and Pi and everything set up so let me tell you about some of our other classes first so this is a list of our classes that we're doing this month so right now here we are we're at the Raspberry Pi Computing Project live with Alex. So what's going on tomorrow on the 12th? Tomorrow morning we're going to be doing Let's Talk About Libby, getting free ebooks and free digital audiobooks and other library resources. Yay. And then tomorrow afternoon we're going to be doing App Swap. App Swap is where I tell you about a whole bunch of great apps that I like to use, camera apps on my phone, night photography, uh, you know, sales paper kind of stuff, all, all, you, you name it, we were going to talk about it. And also you can kind of come and tell me about your favorite app that you use, can't live without kind of stuff, and share it with the class. And then uh, next week we're actually going to be doing some Thanksgiving Day stuff because Thanksgiving is coming up on the 26th. Uh, so the 17th we're going to be doing Thanksgiving Scratch. Let's make a turkey a feather catch game in Scratch. <laughs> and on the 18th, we're going to be doing Let's Draw and Animate a Turkey. So come join me for those two holiday uh, class uh, classes. Now, if you've been in one of my previous classes, uh, we're actually going to build on this, but we're also going to be doing a bunch, a bunch of stuff from scratch. Okay, so we're actually going to have to make our graphics ourselves, and we're also going to have to maybe even make a little bit of a turkey noise. I'm going to have to play around with that. I'm not sure if I can record and get it to record at the same time. We'll see. Um, may have to make that a, a, a pre-sound, but make a good turkey. So anytime we do our turkey, animate him and stuff. So we're going to start making some of our own graphics, not just using the scratch one. So that's a big focus of that class. And then we're going to be doing on the 18th, up well, there in that 18th on the Wednesday afternoon, we're going to be doing internet shopping and digital couponing. So come join me for that with our holidays coming up. And on the 19th, we're going to be doing Let's Make a Turkey Feather Scratch um, Catch Game again. And then we'll be doing the holiday gadgets and gift ideas and some other classes 
kind of finishing up the month, okay? Just a little side note, let you know that how do I get uh, free uh, ebooks and audiobooks through our library. Uh, basically, the easiest thing to do is to know that you have your library card, uh, download the Libby app, look for, it'll say, what library are you with? The Greater Clark Hill Regional Library System, choose Georgia, download destination, and enter your library card, and you're good to go. On a side note, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're actually having a subscribe drive. If we can get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, then we get our own customized YouTube address. Or search YouTube for GCHRL videos and our channel will pop right up it'll go pop see if i do that pop right up <laughs> all right so let me get the handout here now this is not the the one we're going to be covering today this is basically for the basic uh, class i would say but our projects are a little bit separate as well So this, you can kind of view this as a separate project, but it has a lot of great information to kind of get you started and everything. And I posted that in the chat right now, okay? And I'll also open that too. All right, so give me one. There it is. <laughs> I want. All right, so that's loading. I'll kind of cover that a little bit here. All right, so it's kind of like a open beginner to using the Raspberry Pi computer. Zoom in a little bit here. And I kind of say kind of the best thing to do is if you do have, and I'll get out of the way, you do have um, basically me maybe in a separate device while you're kind of flipping back and forth, but I will. So got all that on there. Now a big one, of course, is to remember first attempt in learning is usually fail, okay? So if things are going really well, that's great, but at some point something will probably stop working. So first you need your Raspberry Pi, okay? You need to have the, we're gonna be using the, the OS that we can download for course for free from the Raspberry Pi website. Mouse, computer com, um, connection. And I'm actually gonna be connecting and depending on our project, our, our goals here may actually change with what we need for our project. And also, we're going to be using Muse, so I'll show that briefly as well instead of the normal, um, I guess you'd say the normal Python that you can download. The big thing to know is we're going to be using our Raspberry Pi's pins today. They're called GPIO pins, repeat after me, general input, output, general purpose, input, output. And then our main pins actually have three parts, okay? They have our power, which is 3.3 volts or 5 volts. They have ground or they have GP, general purpose, input, output pins. Now, I will tell you this. Our, our finding out that this kit likes to make it so the pins are not listed as the way they are in here, but the way they actually are listed on the board, which if it does that, I'll actually point that out. But that's one of the projects we're working with today. The biggest thing to remember is when we're working on our project, 
anything has to have a positive and it has to reach negative. So we have our positive flowing through our LED. Most of the time we have a resistor going through or like a fuse. Here's like our button. We press the button and it closes the circuit and electricity flows to the negative or the ground, okay? So even with the button, we have to have our touch or positive, negative, doesn't matter which way on the button, but LEDs, electricity only flows one way, okay? Now here's our breadboard. This is a big one. I want you to understand how our breadboard works. This is kind of a cutoff of it. So the breadboard has rails that goes this way, excuse me, bars that go this way. So if you connect something in this um, little hole here, then we put, put another wire in this hole, that means that they're connected. This allows us to do projects without having to do any kind of soldering or anything. This is our rails. I uh, do not believe we use the rails today, but just realize most of the rails are marked as positive and negative. So you can make something ground here, one wire, and then make a whole bunch of other stuff grounded to it at the same time. Plug in one that's positive or giving power, and then here, and it can go a whole power, a whole bunch of stuff all together, okay? All right, so mostly this is kind of what our project will look like, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and show you what we're gonna be working with today. All right, so basically this is, hello. <laughs> move my camera a little bit here move my mouse and stuff over so basically this is a kit I got off of uh, Amazon it's by a company called free Novi if you look right here the the model number of this kit is called free Novi RFID starter kit I think it was either 35 or 40 dollars mainly I wanted to make it something that was very inexpensive uh, for projects it has great tutorials on their website and the kit's number is FNK0025 okay so if I go to freenovi.com forward slash FNK0025 you can download all the files that I'm going to be working with today okay so our little kit here and we actually are going to pull up our uh, I thought I already had open. Okay. We're actually going to pull up here's our project with table of contents. I'm going to zoom in try to make it as large as I can. So this is the tutorial file. Uh, when we actually download the zip file and open it, it actually includes all of our um, codes but of course in our class we like to walk through the codes and talk about our codes and stuff so lots of fun stuff and we're just kind of working our way through our project box here okay and let me see if I can find there it is very very here is the one we're going to work with today with our project our flowing water LED. We've got servos and motors and all kinds of stuff. We're going to deal with that in other projects, so just keep an eye out for the channel here. And my goal is to kind of just keep working through the different projects. And here's a joystick one right there. That's pretty cool. Um, I actually have some uh, five inch LED, yeah, excuse me, um, LCD screens. So technically, I do not have a, um, a 3D printer myself, but the library does. So I've even thought about making a project where I actually had a uh, 3D printer wired this for a joystick. I've done, I've actually done a Bluetooth joystick connected it with different gaming projects, but this would be a neat one to, to get our, our um, joystick to work and stuff. So that would be pretty neat. So kind of my goal is that it, it, the camera shows a overview of everything that you see. You can hear me pretty well. And we don't really, this is another one we're going to do. Uh, I think next time we'll work on this one, we're, we'll go back through. So it's a whole bunch of little LEDs in there. Anyway, this is kind of fun. I've never worked with some of these things, so it's kind of a, a fun project to do together. Okay, so let me put everything back in there. Oh, it also has an RFID reader, which was a really interesting thing. 
I thought, and where is it? Here it is. So it actually has an RFID reader in there, okay? So you technically could use it to like unlock your computer. I think mostly it's just the project is just to set it up and stuff. Okay, so that gives the information about that. Free Novi RFID starter kit for Raspberry Pi FNK0025, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and let's scroll down here. And I'll turn the camera on and off depending on, let me turn the, the, the top light on so that should get a little more light to the situation. There we go. <laughs> Illuminate, there you go. All right, so. Okay, so we go down, it talks about a lot of their products and stuff, and I'm actually going to go just to our content, so projects that we have done. LED, the button switch, the, the setting the, the um, RGB light up is what we did last time. And that actually had an issue, and I'm not really sure if it was the the actual and I actually have this still set up here as well I of course did get it to blink but it never actually blinked uh, green properly which I'm not really sure if there's something wrong with this or just maybe the way that I set it up is wrong um, as well very 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 possible that's what I did okay so our project today is our the um, flowing is what we're gonna do we did the breathing LED, this is the one that we did a minute ago, uh, the last time we did the doorbell as well. Project, I know we had skipped over the flowing water one, so I just thought, well, maybe the best thing to do is just to go back and we'll cover that. The reason I kind of skipped over that because I knew it was gonna be a lot of um, little wires making sure that they're connected in there and I wasn't sure how well that would play with the little camera and everything, but. Here we go. All right, so I got all my wires. All the wires! And all these things came with uh, that kit, okay? So everything I'm using today uh, came in the kit, and that was kind of my goal too. All right, so let's talk about our flowing light. And of course, like I said, this is what you can download from the, the link that I told you about on their website. We learned how to control one LED to blink. Next, we will learn how to control a number of LEDs. Flowing water light. In this project, we use a number of LEDs to make flowing water light components. We need a Raspberry Pi, GPIO extension board, breadboard, jumper wires, our bar graph LED, and we need 10 220 resistors. So, I actually have my chart here. Personally, I actually feel like going through all of these and marking them permanently in a way. I know that they're actually showing the resistor color code. This came with the, the kit showing the, the color code. And this actually came with my Kana kit. And it actually shows the GPIO pins, um, which we're using. I'm not sure what this is called. I have to look back and see this. Uh, Raspberry Pi GPIO extension board. Um, haven't really used this much mostly I just use a topper on here to show that like in class and um, it's for the other project the glue stick for the whoopee cushion one anyway it also shows the the pin numbering on here too so I have run into one project where I was unfamiliar with the pin numbering on here so that's what it wanted me to set up and that's what we did so I just had that right there Okay, so the big thing about our resistors, and like I said, I feel like there should be some way in the future that maybe I should mark these just so that I'll know pretty instantly what they are and I don't have to kind of think about it too much. Now, I think all of these are the two, yeah, all of these right here from the previous project are 220. So I'll go ahead and pull those out. And if I match them up, Yeah. 
And I got my little magnifying glass. I can see it pretty clearly, but I tell you, holding it like this, it's a huge difference. And this this came with a eyeglass kit. I think I bought for for the screw in it many years ago, like at the dollar store for a dollar. Okay. Now these, I think these are from another project. Hmm. One of the reasons I haven't unhooked it is because too, I do want it to be kind of like I'm um, I'm working on the project and then we're doing it together and then you can actually see what changes have happened because then I'm taking it apart so I think that's a two whoop. two twin right there That that one do. Let's see. Hmm. Let's say color two black, a light red, and then a dark. Okay. So the difference between this one and that one is one as a red is redder. So this is a 10. That's a 10 right there. Okay, let me make sure I don't have any kind of like that at all. <laughs> yeah, so this is a 210 right here. Two ten, two ten. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's a that's a ten right that's a ten right there. Okay, I need 10 of those. All right, 210. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. Okay, so we're ready to go with that. All right, so let's undo our wires. Put them over here. And this is the 10 right there, so we'll put those together. Like I said, just for myself, in the future, I may, I may actually mark those so I don't have to keep looking at it with the magnifying glass constantly. Okay, so now that we have our wires, we actually have our bar graph. Let's go ahead and talk about our learning, okay? Let us learn about the basic features of these components to use and understand them better, bar graph LED. A bar graph LED has 10 LEDs integrated into one compact component. The two rows of pins at its bottom are paired to identify each LED like the single LED used earlier. Okay. Let's talk about our circuit reference system of label is used in the circuit diagram below, pins with the same network label are connected together. Okay. There's our schematic. So here's our, let's see. Hardware connection, if you need any support, or contact them. LED bar does not work. Rotate bar 180 to try. The label is random. 
Ah, so basically it's saying that this label on the side of here is random. Interesting. So this must be similar to the LED, but it does not show the LED ones with our learning. We actually learned that the LEDs have a short leg and a long leg. And I've even got a light sensor in here too. Long leg, short leg, if you can see that of course. Long leg, short leg. And it flows from long leg to short leg of electricity. Okay. So I guess this doesn't have that system of long leg, short leg. Okay. So let's kind of mirror our connection. Let's connect it up. And I'm actually going to try to use the same wires. I will tell you when I work, I usually have some kind of uh, music. But of course, because of YouTube and stuff, we shouldn't have music playing. So I encourage you to play some music. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it actually has the label here on the left side, but of course it says the label is random. The biggest thing is to not bend our section. Now I actually call this middle part the river, okay, because this is the part, this actually is a break in between, so we have our rows here. We are not going to be using the rail today, so we're going to put it right about here. Uh, why don't I put it on the the 40 marker. I'm just going to be real delicate here. And get it put on there. All right. Now, because I decided to put the pin on the 40 mark here, it will make it a little bit easier when I'm connecting. Okay, so let's just go through here. Let's go ahead and let's do our resistor first. And then we'll hook it up with um, no that is using our rail because there's our power is coming through let me show you so our power here is coming from three volts of power to here and here's our rail going all the way down here to reach our resistors and then they're going across this way and then that's going back uh, to the board okay all right so don't have a ton of distance here, so I'm going to kind of do it at a high angle. them to touch of course all right I feel like going three ah 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 of course you know if you wanted this to be more of a permanent project you of course could cut these shorter and kind of mimic what they have there I guess four ah 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 Duh, I 
did not do it the way it showed it, now did I? <laughs> All right, we're going to the rail so I don't have to squish it as much as I was. I guess I need to move it back a little further so that it does bear that or I'll have to kind of bend it out a little bit and do that we'll move it back a little bit on the blue rail. course number 10 and we want to make sure they are not touching it anyway okay now let's start with our wires black and got a blue let's see we got our orange mm, I guess that is a black or gray do I have gray I do not have gray 
That must be black then. Okay, so I have black, red or orange. I got a blue, a yellow, yellow. Okay, I got a green. I got a green. And I guess another blue. Blue and a yellow. Let's see. Another yellow. Another green. Another blue. And need a red. Short red, right? All right, so we got red. All right. All right. So let's do the ones on the left first. So I got my red, so it needs to go to from three volts. To our blue rail. Okay. Which I would think you would actually have it go three volts to the red, but I don't but that don't think that matters in this situation. As long as it's touching all of those. Okay, now green. The green needs to be GPIO22. Okay, so this actually has a different chart scheme. So, what would GPIO22 be on here? So, let's look. See, mine's different than that for some reason. MT17. Oh, there's. Duh, it's above the three. GPIO22. And that goes into. Looks like the fourth. Okay. okay. Which is the fourth LED. One, two, three, four. And I guess there. All right. Now we got green. Let's do blue. Seven. And that goes into, it's like the third for every lineup. So we'll go right next to the blue, I mean the green, excuse me. All right, let's get the yellow. And it looks like it goes to the first one. Well, let's look where it goes first. Okay, GPIO 17, and that looks like it's going to go to the first. And there we go. Okay. Now we need a blue. Going to go to SCL1. Now, I'm so used to using GPIOs and everything, so it actually lists it right here would be GPIO3, so SCL. And I'm not 100% sure what the reference of that is. So this has different listings. Finding that out has been pretty interesting. So SCL, and that says SCL1, okay? So it's actually the third one down. There it is, SCL1. Okay. 
Okay. And I see L1, which is our blue, goes all the way. Oh. Hmm. So by the time all this is done, every single LED will have its own GPIO. I guess. I guess you could. I guess that's the way to control them independently. Okay. So that goes to what looks like the second one from the bottom. Okay. All right. Now I need a red. You want to go to SDA1, which is technically GPIO2, SDA1, okay, and that's going to go to the third one from the bottom, try to make it so it doesn't really cover up the LED. But remember, this is a project board, you know, the breadboard. Okay. So, move the mic a little closer. Because we're going to do our programming here in just a minute. Okay. So, we've got all of those, I believe. And then we'll triple check our wires too. So, I need a yellow. Needs to go to GPIO 18. GPIO 18. What is it listed as? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here it is. GPIO 18. And that should go to, looks like our third one. So it's kind of cutting across here. Oh, hang on. Yeah, the second one, sorry. Second one. All right, so now let's do blue. Our blue is GPIO 23. 23. And that's going to the one, two, three, four, fifth one. All right. All right. Blue. Now green. Green GPIO 24. And that's going to go to. Uh, wait, wait. Yeah, right here. Nope. Hang on. Let me make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, wait, wait. One, two, three, four, five. That's the blue to to um twenty-three. So the green goes to seven. So right there. Okay. Now the next one is black. It's going to GPIO twenty-five. And GPIO 25 goes to the next, the one next to green. All right. And now we need to do our last one. So we need a yellow. Using the right, the same colors that matches there will help us uh, troubleshoot later. All right, so that the yellow one goes into CE0, which CE0 is technically GPIO7. So CE0, and that is our last one. Oop. All right, now what I'm going to do is you notice that our Verizon Pro hasn't been plugged in. I'll move it over here a little bit. And let me go ahead and grab the plug. And we're actually going to connect wirelessly to our Raspberry Pi so we can get it on our screen and everything and interact with it too. So I'll give that a second to load.
we're going to be using real VNC viewer. Give that a minute to load. <laughs> Alright, now let's see if it's available. Yay! Here we go. So this is our Raspberry Pi. And I've connected to it wirelessly so we can show it on the screen and everything at the same time. Alright, so Let's go ahead and let's keep reading our do our learn uh, excuse me do our learning blah, 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 if I can talk in this circuit the cathodes of the LED are connected to the GPIO which is different from the previous circuit the LEDs turn on when the GPIO output low level in the program hmm. the project is designed to make a flowing water lamp which are these actions. First, turn LED number one on, then turn it off, then turn on LED number two and turn it off, and repeat the same to all uh, 10 LEDs until the last LED is turned off. The process is repeated to achieve the movements of flowing water. Now this is the, the C code. But of course, we're going to be doing Python. Let's go to our Python. First observe the project results and then view the code. Okay. After you after the program is executed, you will see the LED bar graph starts with the flowing water way to be turned on from left to right and then from right to left. The following is the program code. Okay. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to type our code and let's go ahead and pull up and I'm actually going to turn off camera there so we can have our LED going on and we'll do half and half on our screen here. All right, we're going to be using Mew. So let's hit the Raspberry Pi, go to Programming, and Mew. Now, uh, let me go ahead and close this other part here. The big thing about this different than the Python and the Razor Pi actually has really good details about uh, using this. And let me see if I have that real quick. So on the Raspberry Pi website, there's a great detail on here. It's projects.raspberrypi.org, or just search for, you can go to where it says uh, getting started with Mew. Basically, it kind of walks through the code. The print here, unlike the other Python, it actually shows up at the bottom when you hit run, okay? Makes it a lot easier for students and for myself even to use. Um, I like that it can have more than one thing, and it's a nice little tab section up here. Of course it's free to download it actually comes with our Raspberry Pi already installed under the programming and everything and of course this website walks you through downloading it like in Windows or anything like that okay all right so let's go ahead back so what we need to do is we need to do new so I think I need to make zoom this out a bit here And I'll move it over a little bit. Now, of course, the big thing about it is with our code when we have our hashtags. Hey, Mac, how are you? Yes, they do.
Everything that I'm using today comes with it except for the Raspberry Pi with the kit that I showed earlier. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and save our document here. So let's do say let's do new. Whoop, didn't mean to click it twice. Let's hit save. It's gonna say what do you want to save it? I want to save it as let's save it as Python light water. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's go ahead and let's start typing and kind of walk through our uh, you know our project here we're going to run it and then see if we can make some changes to it after it works now I will tell you this the one thing that I wish that this board doesn't really do much these, these tutorials don't really do is I'm a big one about in class when we have all the students wire stuff up is immediately let's run a test to make sure the wiring is all wired up oh I actually hmm might be actually seeing uh, let's see. Hmm. Okay. Very bright, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's or maybe it's gonna get brighter in a minute. I don't know. All right, so <laughs> so does that mean that the other ones aren't wired up properly? Mm, we will see. We will see now, won't we? Okay, so hopefully that'll be a little brighter than that because right now the um, the actual looks like the the lights have come on a little bit here, as you can see. Hopefully they'll get a little bit brighter than that, but not all of them are on. So we'll see what our code does. Okay, so again, what I was saying is we don't really have, they don't show me a code to actually just get the, the light turn on or off. So we'll actually won't know until we finish up our full code here, okay? So first we wanna import two things from our libraries. One we're gonna import from our time library now a big thing is that capitalization does matter okay so as So import time import time L E D P I M S pins. Now I'm a big believer of even if we think while we're working we make changes to something best thing to do is to do our recipe or follow our tutorial the first time and then we want to do the project again or mess with our project you can do that next time okay well if I can do 15 All right, let's see. All right. 
so 15 comma 16 18 22 3 5 and 24 So let's define set up open parentheses close parentheses and colon and it should indent it gpio set mode open parentheses gpio board it says use physical GPIO numbering so again if we actually look at our little chart here where we actually have our GPIO that will not matter because it's actually going to be numbering it based on where the pins are on our Raspberry Pi okay okay so GPIO board GP B I O set up L E D pins comma G P I O out GPIO O U T L E D pins Oh, forgot to say output. Output pins G P I O I. All right, set all LEP pins to output mode, make all LED pins output high level, okay? All right, now let's get rid of our indention. Find loop, open parentheses, close parentheses, and let me scroll down a little bit here. It's funny because our last project had a whole lot more coding than this one. All right, we're doing a while true. Make sure the true is capital. For pin and LED pins for pin and LED pins, make LED on move from left to right. GPIO out put Oprah's pin GPIO low 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 all right time now in the other classes we learned that time sleep basically puts the computer to sleep for if you do a whole number it's a second is that a comma or a period that's no, supposed to be a period okay G P I O out put pin comma 
TPIO period all right now let's get rid of one of our inventions here for pin LED pins uh, brackets colon colon dash a number one and I'm not really sure what that means but let's see make oh okay make LED on move from right to left I wonder what I thought these would individually light up hmm let's we'll see how that works whoop I O out put pin comma G P I O Lou so time sleep. Let's see. One GPIO output pin GPIO HIGGH. Output pin. Okay, now let's do backspace, get rid of all of our indentions here. All right. Let's finish typing this and then we'll look at that. Okay, so loop forever loop. We need our oh, this is our this is the one where it's about turning it off, and they always want to have that. And I'm not really sure if that's a hundred percent necessary, but But they do for some reason. So we will do it. GPIO clean up, open parentheses, close parentheses. And say if. Name Main Entrance, okay. Print, and they have this thing where they want it to print on the screen. Yes, it's T A R R T I N G. One, two, three. It's set up. Y loop okay and I'll do the the keyboard part e x p e e x p e t oh well, x c thank you the T 
Okay, now let's do save. I probably have done some code in here that's a little messed up, but let's look at it. And we'll turn our camera on here. Let's hit run and see if something happens. Oh, syntax error, time sleep. I thought so. I was thinking that that actually looks like, where is it on here? I think that's supposed to be, so that would mean the other one. There must not be a space there, but on our sheet, it looks like a space, doesn't it? All right, so stop. Yeah, did not like that. You guys sent that four pin LED. Let's see, four pin. Four pin in, okay. Four pin in. All right, save. What? Oh, didn't like the keyboard thing either. Let's see. Accept keyboard interrupt. Let's see. Oh. I did the, the thing wrong. That's funny. Oh. All right, now. Oh, looky, looky, looky. It's, let's see. Oh. There's one line that's skipping. That's the third one. Let's see. Mm. <laughs> it's doing all of them except for the third one. Okay, so hmm. let's move on. All right, let's check our code first. So eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen. 22, 3, 5, and 24. And let's look at our wiring. And that's the third one here, and it's the red wire. And it's supposed to be going to SDA1. And SDA1 is 3. SDA, which is 3. And I do see 3 on there, so let's make sure. That's uh, the C code, yeah. Okay. Does say three. All right. So this is our LED pins. Three. And it's supposed to be connected to, let's see, the third one, like I said, SDA1. in there. Alright, 
Let's start the run again. Ooh. Kind of cool. Except that the one is not working. Okay, let's go back to our code here. All right, so got it going down and it's doing, oh, that's the, the other code, sorry. Okay, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 18, 22, 3, 5, and 24. Let's see. Set define GPIO setup mode, GPIO board, GPIO setup LED pins, fill out. Let's see. Define loop. While true, so this is our loop right here. While true for pin LED GPI output pin uh, low sleep. GPI output pin, GPI high. Let's see for pin and LED pins. GPI output low time sleep, GPI high. So supposedly it's supposed to be the wiring. Okay, well I'll try a different wire just in case. Get out of the red over here. So I know that if I went back to my previous, you know, just the LED code, I could probably figure out a way to light each one just individually. All right, let's see. Nope, still skipping it. Okay. But since it is the third one here. get a new one and just replace it. Of course these all these should work but parts are parts. So we know that that's three on there. No, hold on. Yeah, that's just supposed to be three. So that's the A. That's the A1. And the other one is three. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, that's three. Three on our board, and then there's five supposed to be right there. Okay. All right, so, oh, hold on. Because I'm starting, oh, I'm getting this every once in a while. I'm not sure why. Runtime warning, this channel's already in use. Can it anyway? Oh, it wants me to do the control C to stop completely, I believe. And then when I run it, yeah, still got that error message. Well, it looks great except for that one that it's missing. All right, let's read about 
uh, what it actually is telling us. Maybe we can figure it out. Oh no! I clicked the wrong button. Hold on, I gotta go back to the table of contents here. Let's check. So let's go full screen. So, in the program, first define 10 pins connected to the LED and set them to output mode in subfraction setup. Then, in the loop function, use two four loops to realize flowing water light from right to left and from left to right. So, that's why it's going. Hmm. All right, so it's this this light. Is, my brain's telling me you could maybe if you did it properly, come up with some point that it, you have to press the button at the right time, and then it's a game. All right, so flowing water from left to right. The right pin to right LED is that to use to get elements of LED in reverse order. So make LED from left to right. So we had it go to do left to right. So it's just pointing out, I guess, the, the code here. I think that's the same code. In the program, the first to find 10 pins set up an output mode subfraction set up then the loop function use two for loops to realize flowing water light oh well let me let me I'm gonna plug in a different one so this is our the third one okay so I'm gonna unplug it and I'll plug in our blue one that we know number two is working and then that'll be our test to see there you go So, hmm. Maybe we need to look back at our code. Trust me, I've actually run into codes that mean tutorials that tell you the wrong thing all the time. Nope. But yes, that should be number three right there. And I wanted to mess with the time a little bit. Or the timing to make it go faster and slower. So let's see if we can troubleshoot our button here that's not working. See how it looks like it's blinking? Well, the reason it looks like it's blinking is one is missing there at the end. Okay, so let's see if we can troubleshoot this. Okay, so it goes from 11. 11. Let me see if I got a pen or pencil I can use to point. Hmm. I'll get this. All right. So we have it going to 11. All right. And then it goes to 12. This is on the opposite side. And then it goes to 13, which is the opposite. And then right next door to 15. Okay. And then we have 16, and then 18, and then we have to go 22, which is down further, okay, 22, and then it goes way up here to 3, and then 5, and then... Okay, so
So we're basically just going to move the channel to a different GPIO. So let's do, we'll do seven. Instead of three, we'll make it seven. And we'll plug that one into GPIO four. Okay. Okay. So stop our code. And we're going to, instead of a three, we're going to make it a seven. And then hit save. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. Huh. I wonder why. Hmm. GPIO set mode, GPIO board, GPIO output. D, GPIO LED, a high. Yeah, but it's working. If you can see, we've got it working. I'll move it a little closer. And there you go. Let me move the wire out of the way. So there's your flowing light. Okay. All I did was I changed the the GPIO it was on. Hmm. That might be. I'm gonna have to look into this. The uh, I don't know why that wouldn't work. Why wouldn't that work? It has to be set up something else. It has to be maybe that there's something on here that was set up differently. Okay, so if I do one to destroy. Oh, I have spelled destroy wrong. save so when I hit run that's working properly now but then I do control C okay and then it's supposed to huh So if I do stop, save, and for a second I'll switch back and see maybe I needed to do the, the, um, the, the keyboard at the end so it released all of the GPIO pins or something. Let's see. Nope. That ain't it. So it completely stopped it there, didn't it? Okay. Nope. But when I do the keyboard shortcut, it does completely stop it. Well, still skipping it. Let me close this and I'll reopen it and then we'll play around with our timing a little bit, okay? Hmm. All right. Nope, still skipping it. Oh well. At least this one I was actually able to figure out how to go around that. Why that's happening, I don't know. But I got it on GPIO 4. And then re-do our code.
code here instead of three, which is actually seven on our little board here. I hit save, and it works. Whoosh. All right, so let's kind of mess around with our code a little bit now. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, I'll leave it here in the middle here. Okay, so I'm gonna do Control C to completely stop it. Tell it to stop, save. And let's see if we can get it. It's at point uh, one. Let's make it do point five. And it should seem. What do you think? You think it'll seem faster or slower? That it's slower, isn't it? Do 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 do. Okay, or we can actually make it do the opposite instead of making it go. Oh, where is it? Tell it stop. Instead of telling it to go, where is it? Hey, which way? Okay, I'm going to bring the thing up here to make sure I know what I'm talking about. There it is. LED from pin and LED output pin. PPI low, so I guess that's the low number and high. So if I actually switch these two, so I make it go, okay, so it's saying that, so the low numbers are, of course, here on our board to high, okay. Well, that doesn't really work that way either. Hmm. The interesting thing is I bet if I actually do this, I'm going to cut that out, save it, and then it should only go one way now. There you go. There you go. So it's only going to go one way now. you're going to add a zero between that five so now it's going to be a lot faster and we have it going down and going back up so actually if I switch these where it's going to go so it says pin low here pin high but it said this actually means Hmm. The program first defines 10 pins connected, set then the output mode in sub fraction setup, then the loop fraction, two loops realize flowing water to light, left to right. To right, use the element LED pin in reverse. So. from left to right from pin in make LED from right to left okay well how would you make it do the other way hmm. loops rise flowing wire 
flight, then in the loop function, use two from loops to realize flowing water light from right to left and to right AZ pins mice is used to get elements of AZ pins in reverse. So I really would have to, how would this work? Because these say the same thing, this here. So this does the reverse of that. So I guess the way to hmm. If I take this and instead of it saying low, I change that to high. Okay. Change this to low. All right. Let's see what that looks like. So it should go from there, up there down, I believe. Let's see. Oh, what in the world? Wow. Okay, that did not do what I thought it would do. Hmm, we've made a new effect now, haven't we? Now, if I was trying to do that, it wouldn't work out for me now, would it? Okay, so if I deleted this part, or just cut that, whoop. If I just cut this part and then hit save and run. Ooh, that got weird. Look at that. So output pin up. Let me switch it back to the it being one so we know what it should look like. There you go, a little bit. Mm, wow, okay. So the high means on. Mm, what does that mean? Okay, start up high. And then after a second, then get low. No, it means, yeah, so it's high and then it's turning off. So it's actually doing the opposite now. Okay, now let's put back, oh, that needs to be indented there. <laughs> and when it hits the end, it goes down. Okay. You see it's kind of going back up a little bit faster now. It's like a yo-yo almost. Okay. That's the change in the low to high. But if we did Let's change this to high, this to low. There you go. Now it's doing the same thing. So the low is like telling the light off and the high is telling the light on. So if we go here and we change this to low and then this to high, then it should like the, look like the opposite. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right.
if we go back to the way it originally was, low high and low high. What would low low do? Probably nothing. Oh wow, now it looks like it's kind of like a jumping beam. And if I told everything low, there you go, looks like nothing's happening. So low and high are like on and off. So if I told this high, There you go. <laughs> now it looks like a running light. Okay, interesting. Low, high, high, low. There you go. Let's get back the way it originally was. Low and then high. And there's our original bouncing back and forth. Now, let's see. If I did the pins Stop. If I went up here and I actually did our numbering differently, then you could have it so it's going from the bottom to the top. What if we change this to not neg negative one, but we changed it to one? Does that completely change our code? Let's see. Oh. Okay, so the negative one tells it to go back to where it came from. So if we made it negative two, what would happen? Ooh, so it's doing two times. Huh. If I did negative five. Ooh, it does. Oh, wow. Okay. It's actually skipping lights now. Oh, okay. So let's give it an odd number. Let's do three. And it's like it's going to skip. The lights. So let's get. Let's go back and give it a um, the one. So it's kind of the same speed as before. But it's going to skip every three. There you go. Can you tell it's it's jumping to every three when it comes back up? Do 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 do. Interesting. All right. Well, we've learned something new, haven't we? And I'll actually put it back on the one. So we did our complete our project. Oh, what'd I do? Oh, I deleted the, I found out it's kind of easy to delete some of the stuff because it's like it almost auto um, selects it. Okay, well, I deleted something else I don't like. 
All right, let's see. Let's see, one. Oh. Okay, it needs the bracket, and then it needs that. There you go. All right, so there's our completed project right there. Our flowing water. We learned how to change the speed of it. We also may learned how to make it step back and forth. I don't know why the um, it did not like the number three on here. Jumper on our Raspberry Pi. But then I was able actually to connect it up to the seventh GPIO pin and then reprogrammed it to say seven instead of the three. And of course, as you see now, it's working. I don't know why, I remember I changed out the resistors and I also changed out the wire and I still had a problem with it. But we'll see. So that was a fun project to work on. I could see you coming up with something, some else I could even see just kind of playing around with that. That could be something kind of fun to even make some kind of portable uh, light up uh, you know project or something but anyway I could even see maybe even uh, creating a um, like a game or something like somebody's on this side and if they press it within a certain if they press the button within a certain second it'll actually bounce back and forth kind of like a, a weird version of pong I could see that but we are successful with our project so we're going to go ahead and bring class to a close here. I'm definitely going to set up to do some, uh, at least two more of these next month. So if you join me with that, we're just working through our project list. At least two more that were really well, and it was actually pretty fun. So, <laughs> so we've kind of come to the end of our class and everything. And I'll go ahead and hit save and stop here. So, of course, I encourage you to join us for some of our classes tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing Let's Learn More About Libby, how to get free ebooks, free audiobooks and stuff. There's my color a little bit there. Free ebooks, free audiobooks and stuff. Enjoy us for that. And of course, tomorrow afternoon we're doing a app swap class. I'll tell you about lots of great apps that I like to use. Camera stuff, shopping stuff, you name it. The, we'll be looking at the one that um, looks at the stars and stuff. So we'll be talking about a whole bunch about that at 2.30. And of course, our other fun classes, we have Thanksgiving Day game classes next week. Create a turkey class, um, turkey uh, next week, animate it and all kinds of stuff. Buying and selling, uh, holiday gift and gadget ideas. And of course, Thanksgiving's on the 26th. Our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. Please thank the librarians for doing that. It's a wonderful program. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library uh, with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates. And search YouTube. To find our YouTube channel, search GCHRL videos and it will pop right up. So thank you for being here with me, being here with me today. We got our, our, our projects all worked on and it was a lot of fun. And um, hopefully you'll share this video with others and I'll see you next time. So happy Veterans Day. <laughs> Have a great day, I'll see you next time. Stay safe, stay positive. <laughs> Bye-bye.